you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 25, starting at the 20th verse. And it reads, so he had received five talents. So, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you, had, you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even that he has will be taken away. Father, we ask that you may bless the word in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. We are continuing. We are continuing into our series of keys. Say keys. keys. Yeah. Essentially life keys. We're continuing. And so today is a really good day because today I'll be giving two keys. Amen. So today we'll have one key. And then this afternoon at 2 p.m. we'll have another key. And so. The key that I want to share with you in my brief time is the key of management. Say management. management. Stewardship. That's what management essentially is. And one thing we have to understand about keys is keys work all the time. If you have keys to your car, to your house, that key means you have access. That key means you have authority. And so this life is learning how to operate with keys that we have available to us. Those keys are not respected of any persons. Anyone that chooses to operate in these principles will receive the benefit from them because keys essentially promote life. They advance life. They preserve life. Amen. Now, I know in times we were designed and we were created for a purpose. And God has designed for us to experience fulfillment when we're walking out our purpose. And he has released into us certain keys for us to get that much more closer and accurate in our purpose so that for the main reason we do not experience frustration. So the purpose of these keys is to move you past the place of frustration into a place of fulfillment in your life. God's desire is that everyone that he created walks and lives a life of fulfillment. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I don't know what the religious other uh, organizations and institutions may say, you know, no, you can't be too happy. No, you, you, you too happy. You got to be sad sometime. You know, that's humility. Humility is just being sad sometime. I know you could afford a nice car, but that no, you, you're not supposed to do that. That's religion. Amen. God wants us to be fulfilled. And so he gives us tools. He gives us keys to experience that fulfillment. So this year, as we apply these keys, we're going to move past a place of failure into a, pla into a place of success. Can you say amen? amen? So what is stewardship? What is management? Number one, if you're taking notes, management is the administration of everything under our control. Everything entrusted to us needs to be managed. Everything under our control has to be managed. Number two, it is also... A, the consecration of oneself and possessions to God's service. Now, 
Stewardship acknowledges in practice that we do not have the right or the control over our properties, even ourselves, but that everything is, is under God's control. That's what stewardship means. It means in reality, we don't really own anything. In the past few weeks, we've had the unfortunate opportunity of having to attend certain funerals. And you know, one thing that I noticed at funerals, I noticed they, there's dark suits, dark outfits. Okay, I, I noticed that. I notice there's flowers. Um, occasionally, you have one or two women that try to throw themselves in the hole. <laughs> Amen? I've made up my mind to just move out of the way. The way they really do it is they really want someone to hold them back. So what you got to do is they go on in, just go on. They don't really want to get in the hole with them, right? It's just, it's just drama. But I notice every funeral usually have that. But till this day, I have yet to see a U-Haul at a funeral, at a mausoleum. Why? Because you don't take it with you. You don't move it to the other side with you, which means it's not really yours. We just have the opportunity to manage it, which means your time, your, tra your talent, your treasures, your relationships all have to be managed. Now, write this down, write this down. This is a, this is a life principle. Write this down and I'll give you the verse to back it up. God will not give you what you pray for. He will give you what you can manage. Think about it. Now, watch this now. Everything is made available by God for you. He's a good father. Whatever it is that you need from God is available to you. Right? So parents, any parents in here? Raise your hand real quick. Parents, you and I know your bank account is an extension of your children's bank account. Amen? Whether their name is on your account or not, subliminally, they know that's theirs too. Can you say amen? amen? So which means everything you have is available to your children. Is there any good parents in the house? Decent, halfway good parents. All right. Christmas only. OK. But the point is, whatever you have is available to your children. But that don't mean they get it right away. Why? Because you're looking for some level of maturity. So they can drive the car when they show that they are what? Responsible with it. And God being a much better parent than we are. He doesn't withhold anything from us, but he does delay it sometimes. Why? Because he wants to see some level of responsibility and maturity. And that's where management comes in. Now, let me prove it. Genesis chapter two, verse four through five. It says this. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord, for the Lord, God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. So essentially what happens is where there is no management, God withholds growth. Where there is no management, God, think about everything that you ever did in your life. The things that you manage, you saw results from. Amen? Amen? Like, you will not get abs looking at the person do crunches on the screen. It doesn't work like that. You won't get the information in the book. Some of my college students, rest in your head overnight. The information will not transfer into your head via osmosis. It won't happen that way. So essentially what happens is whatever you want to grow in your life, manage it. Amen. Manage it. Good. Steward it. Be responsible of it and it will grow. Your relationships, your friendships. It's like, how is it that two people with the same model car, 20 years later, this car is still running and this one is on the side? Mm -hmm. Management. How is it that two people who started in the same place, 20 years later, one's here, one's there. Management. It's about management. And so everyone is entrusted with resources of time, talent, and treasure, relationships, opportunities. We all have that. We are accountable to God and are responsible to use those resources that they may increase in value. 
that they may increase in value. So in this chapter in, in Matthew 25, what we see here is we see that everyone has access to the same information. Everyone has access to the master before he takes the long trip. Everyone has some level of talent. Whether you know it or not, you have a talent. You have something within you that God gave you to deposit in the earth. You do. The problem is it's buried on your job that you hate. Frustrated on I-4. It's buried in you, but you have it. And you are in danger of taking the gift and the talent of God back to the grave. You're in danger of that. And so, so two profited, one failed. Why? Why did he fail? Why do we fail? Why do people succeed? Why do people fail? If we have the same starting point, which is in time, you can't get more time. You can't get more time. Everyone has some level of opportunity. So how is it that we fail? How is it that we succeed? So what I want to give you real quick in my time is I want to give you three reasons that I believe, the research that from this text that why people fail. And the goal is to essentially, the goal is to essentially make your life somewhat fail preventive. Like prevent, the goal is to prevent failure. Now we may not be able to make you fully fail proof, but how can we prevent failure? All right, number one. The reason that he failed was not because of something external. The reason that he failed was because it was something on the inside of him. Failure first happens from within before it reveals itself on the outside. Write that down. Failure first happens from within and then eventually it shows up on the outside. Failure first happens from within and then eventually it shows up on the outside. You've watched sports games before. You've watched fights before. When the opponent comes out of that tunnel, you already know who has the edge. If you were a boxer, Mike Tyson come out, he has a psychological edge on you. Everyone has a plan until they get hit. So how do people feel? Number one. I believe it's these three reasons right here. One, story. Two, state. Three, strategy. If you take a moment and consider the times in your life, the endeavors that you went on, and you experienced some level of failure, you can trace it back to one of these three. Either you had the wrong story, you were in the wrong state, and I'm not talking about geographic state, or you had the wrong strategy, or the strategy was not the best strategy to experience the success. All right, let's put it in layman terms. You either had the wrong mindset, you had the wrong mood, or you had the wrong mechanics. We fail oftentimes because of the wrong mindset, we're in the wrong mood, or we have the wrong mechanics. You got the wrong story, you got the wrong state, and you got the wrong strategy. Or the, you don't have the most efficient or effective strategy. So let's look at them real quick. So, um, story. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 24, it says this. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, I knew you to be a hard man. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So first of all, his story was off. So he automatically assumed that, man, this guy's rough. He's tight about his money. I'm just going to put his money away. And a lot of times we don't experience success in life because we create our own narratives. Oh, I'm not going to go over there. They're not hiring. I'm not going to ask for a raise. We're in a recession. There's, there's not enough. There's, the budget is not there. 
Well, I, I can't, we tell ourselves why we can't do certain things. So the story that he is now creating is a false one. And what happens is a story is a set of beliefs that you have tied together to form a story in your mind. Why it's not working out. That's the story. We, we have this picture in our mind. It's because of this. It's because of the man that I'm not getting ahead. We only said that. Noti- I noticed eight years ago, no one said nothing about the man. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now it's the man. Eight years ago, it wasn't the man. Okay. Because you was the man. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a disempowering story guarantees failure into your life. See, your story can either set you forward or it can draw and pull you back. The Bible says, as a man think in his heart, so is he. Now, I'll give you some reference at a later time. Please go check it out. In the book of John, in the book of John, uh, it looks like it's around the fifth chapter. In the book of John, Jesus is walking and he goes and he's, he goes to a pool and there's a man laying at the pool that's been there for 38 years. Laying at the pool, Right? And he comes up to the man and he says, do you want to be made well? First thing out of his mouth is, do you have anybody to move me into the pool? That's his story. That's where his mind is. Re- if I could just get into the pool, but he don't, even have the, he don't even have the confidence to move one inch per year. One feet per year. Close to the pool. Roll a year. You know, just... <laughs> Just something. He's in the same place complaining. And a lot of us, we would rather complain than inch by inch. So what if it takes 10 years to get your master's? But you know what? 10 years later, you get your master's. So what if it takes you 15 years to get your house? But you know what? You got your house. Whatever it requires, you got to do it. And so the story, he rather stay on the story than make a change and make a decision. And so he'd rather stay there. I don't have anybody to push me in. But let's look at the counter. Because sometimes men, we tend to be more negative sometimes. But the women are like, they're positive. Right? So same Bible in Mark chapter 5. She said to herself, the woman with the issue of blood, she sees a crowd. She sees the hindrance. She sees the limitations. And she says to herself, if I could, I can't, I, w- I can't even touch him. If I can just touch what's connected to him. So, so she has to now get down, crawl through, and connect to him. Why? Why did she do that? She did that because she convinced herself before she started that if I can just touch him. And so some of you guys, all you got to do is convince your mind first. Look, if I could just get $1,000 to start the business, just the, just the, I'll, I'll, I'll figure the rest out. And you give yourself a goal, a benchmark. Why? Because God can do exceedingly. But you go, I don't have any place to start. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know who's going to give it to me. I don't know who's going to support it. Right. So so your story will drive your life's responses. If you don't like the responses of your life, change your story. All right. Let me give you this. Write this down. Faith is speaking before seeing. Faith is speaking before seeing and behaving before beholding. Faith is speaking before seeing and behaving before beholding because behavior follows belief. I know what you believe based on how you behave. Yeah, man, I'm going to be a millionaire one day. Home all day. How many books did you read this year? None. But you know all the latest shows, you know who got shot and who got killed, who coming off the show, who coming on the show. Right. I had a friend of mine. um, We was in sports management together. And for years, I would tell him it was from city to city. From years, I would tell him because he was around all these NBA players and he knew all of them on a personal basis, chill with them in the summer. I would tell him for years. I'm like, yo, you know so much about basketball. Why don't you go work in the front office? Why don't you learn from the agent? He would he just would chill. He just would chill until his time ran out. 
until his time ran out. He didn't maximize or capitalize on the opportunity that he had. And so your belief drives your behavior. So based on what you believe, you're going to behave like it. And so check your like if check your behavior because your behavior is telling on what you really believe. A year ago, we believed if we can just start. If we can just get into the school, we'll figure the rest out. If we can just start. That's what our belief and we behave as such. And, you know, when you're when you're when you are not sure and you're trusting God, that's not the time to show that in front of people. Like you could go in your prayer closet. I scared like, oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going on. Oh, no, people. Oh, God, is this going to work? But after you come out like God's got this, we got this. We got this, y'all. Come on. Like, oh, Jesus. I don't told these people we started the church. But that's how it starts, though. That's how it starts. Like, God wants to see, do you really trust me? Like, jump. Like, how, am I going to jump? Am I going to cr- die, crash, jump? Amen? Amen? All right, so number two, state. Your mental and emotional perception about your life and experiences creates your mood. Your mental perception and your experiences, they create your mood. In your life. So you you start on this track where you start this story. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. We have a victim mentality. This is why it's not working out. And eventually that mindset creates our mood. You know, some pessimistic people like like, man, like I remember I was like, man, it's a nice day outside. It's, like, oh, it's already hot. I'm like, there's a cool breeze, though. Ah, oh, but it's going to rain later. It's like. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get to the beach. Oh, you know, riptides, like people dying out there, sharks. I'm like, jeez, okay. You know, but that, there's people who what? They, they, they bask in a negative environment and they exude it like cologne. Like you can just pick it up and you got to be careful because you take your baby, your dream around them, they'll abort it. Not even intentionally. Not even intentionally, right? Because they're dream killers naturally, you know? They just seek the next living thing and kill it (laughs) with their pessimism. So you gotta, so what you working on? Not much, (laughs) not much. You know them kids be like, what you got in your hand? (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) Let me see that. No. See, great strategies can surround you, but they will be invisible to you unless you put yourself in a strong, determined, empowered state. See, there is no greater state. There is no greater state than being and living in the presence of God. Because the Bible talks about in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his and at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Right. And 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 that joy is strength. So when you feel like your day beats up on you, I don't know what you got to do. Just crawl, get to the presence of God. Just just get to a place where the presence of God shows up and he just recharges you. He just replenishes you and you start over when 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 the world just cut you and told you, no, it's not going to work. Just get to the presence of God and he recharges you. He sends you back out with a different state. People are looking at you like, but you experienced failure yesterday. What, what, why are you? Because the state that I live in is constantly being renewed. Amen. It's the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Amen? Write this down. A negative state will prompt a negative story. A negative story will cause you to execute an ineffective strategy. So essentially, a bad mood will contribute towards a bad mind. And a bad mind will contribute to bad mechanics. A bad mood will contribute towards a bad mind. And a bad mind will contribute towards a bad mechanic. Now, this is the last one, strategy. In Matthew chapter, in in, in Matthew 25, his state of mind was, I was afraid. I was afraid. I knew you to be a hard man. I knew you to be, I, I I knew you'd be a tough man, a difficult man. And so as a result, I was afraid. So so I didn't come talk to you. I didn't assess. I just assumed you're a hard man, 
and that made me afraid. You got to be careful with that. Assuming will rob you of opportunities in life. Just have the tough conversation and move on. I was watching this show. One of my, you know, a show that I got into late. Some parts it's like, okay, not too fond of that, but whatever. We'll watch it. So I was watching the show and everything could have been resolved if they just communicated. No one communicated. Everyone assumed people got dead. And in life, that's what it's like sometimes. No one communicates. We just assume. And what happens is we make our own conclusions off of assumptions. Right. And so this is why this next part, he says, I was afraid. I knew you'd be a hard man. And look, let's look at his mechanics. He took the fear. He took the assumption and he went and buried the talent. And he buried the talent. I went and hid your talent. See, strategy is the actions you take to reach a desired end. So in order for us in life to find what works in strategy, you have to find someone that has proven that it works. Because while they're there in the house and the master's still there, they immediately went and started interacting with the talent. So when you have a talent in your hands, find someone else who's working with their talent, who's developing their talent, who's doing it. Why? Because you can glean from them. See, there, what happens is mentorship and accountability will protect your strategy. It'll protect your strategy. I'm so glad I have mentors in my life that I can go and go, hey, I was thinking about buying this. He goes, oh, no, don't buy that. Don't spend your money on that. There's money available to get that. Hey, I was thinking about moving here, going here. No, 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 no. That's yes. OK, now is the time. Actually, I know someone that has one. They'll get it to you at a reduced right at a reduced price. See, when you have counsel and accountability, it'll save you time and money. Because those relationships favor is better than money. Favor will open up doors for you. Favor is one of the best strategies that God gives his children. But you got to work it. Amen. Now, now success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. Success doesn't leave it to accident. Like it's, it's interesting. Um, church, the institution is very hypocritical. It's very hypocritical. OK, you come to church and pastor leadership is put together that automatically there's a mental mindset that says that church is religious. Right. As if you would feel more comfortable if they were dressed down in everything. But you take that same mindset and walk into a bank. Let your financial planner come out in casual clothes on a Tuesday. You'd be like, I'm not sh- I'm not I'm not giving my money to this bank. He don't take his job seriously. Right. Mm-hmm. See. So that mindset, we pick and choose where to apply it. So move exterior things out of the way. Results. So someone wants to manage your money. Uh, I need to see your financial portfolio. How do you manage your money? Amen. Because if you've been taking losses for the past five years, what makes you think you're going to get profits and dividends from my with my money? Amen. Oh, just trust me. Faith. Right. Yeah. Right. OK, so that's just money. That's just money. You can replace money when it comes to your spiritual life. You don't play games with that. So you need to get spiritual results. So when it was when it t- came time for us. So for us, whatever need we have in our lives, we identify someone who's getting results for it. We need to buy a house. Let's look for a couple, a married couple who went through the process of buying a house. Let's ask them some questions. Let's see what they did, what were some pitfalls and everything. And we apply it. We transpose it into our life. We want to get married. We want to because we're going to school or whatever. Okay, let's look for a married couple who's been married through some rocky times, who has it and it's proven. And let's get the information from them and transpose it into our lives. Amen. Why? Because it saves you time. It saves you time. Why? Because success leaves clues. Whatever you're missing, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Look around you. Look on your somebody on your row has the information that you're getting ready to spend thousands of dollars for. 
But your strategy is, oh, I, I don't, I don't talk to people. I don't like this. So you, your, then your, stra- your strat. So your story is people won't understand. Your mind, your mood is, uh, I don't understand. You see what I'm saying? I had to break that mindset from my mind. I grew up in Miami. I'm being transparent. I had a culture shock when I moved to Orlando. When I say culture shock, I mean culture shock. I kid you not, in Miami, Florida, we had one white kid in our school. One. I can still remember him now, just running through. Right? I moved to Orlando. We moved to Orlando, and our parents put us in Dr. Phillips. Culture shock. But you know what? I am so appreciative because, because like my friends are like, man, you connect well. I'm like, yeah, because um, it, it, it opened my mind to other people. Because in your environment, this is, this is what it is. Like when you grow up in an environment, everyone looks like you, dress like you. And so what happens is you leave that environment with that mindset. Right. And so when you enter into another environment, you take that mindset from that environment into the new one. Don't trust them. Can't do anything with them and everything. And then and then so you take that mindset and that is a self-defeating mindset because some of the most people that has been the most accessible to me, especially when it came to doing this ministry, did not look like me. Some of the people that I've connected that are shakers and movers did not look like me. Hey, I got somebody I think you need to talk to. Hold on a second, sit right here. They got people on the phone for me. Hey, I got my friend here, Pastor Me. he's launching the church. Can you give him some connected me on the spot? I went to my people. Well, you know, just, uh, you know, just, uh, <laughs> just, it's hard, man, just. Uh. <laughs> and so from that moment, I realized connect with people who don't look like you because deep down it ain't about exterior it's about purpose you start working on purpose you're gonna run into all types of people all colors all shapes all sizes you better get out of that box mentality why because it's going to it's going to keep you down and so management communicates capacity for more i'm closing Management communicates capacity for more. If you desire to be in, increased, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, it says, he who is faithful with the least is now made ruler. Faithful in terms of stewardship managing with the little is now ruler. Now you get to oversee it in the much. So essentially what happens is when we want to show God that we're ready for increase because it's already available. Remember, good father unlimited bank account, as far as whatever you need from God, it's already available. Jesus Christ, paid, Jesus Christ paid the price that you have access to it. So the way we now communicate to God that we're ready for that is through our management. So God sees you managing your time at work. He sees you, you, you you're, you're managing your first one in, last one out. If you need to work longer, you clock out so you don't milk overtime. And I know I'm we're like, what? Get that, o- OT me. <laughs> I feel the resistance, Jesus. They observe your style and say, you know what? We were planning on opening another location and we rather promote from within. God promotes from within. I just want to let you know right now. God promotes from within. God promotes from within. And it doesn't necessarily be around you because God has access to everyone. And so God will take you being faithful in Florida and he'll put you in New York. Someone in New York is mismanaging resources that they have and somehow your name is going to come up from Florida. That's how God operates. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I'll prove it. Bible. Saul is the king. Okay, you don't want to act right? Backside of the desert. I'm going to raise me up, David, who's being faithful with sheep to now be the future king. That is a fear of mine. Lord, please don't replace me and let me still show up for work. Amen? So you got to make sure you manage it. All right, so, so, 
the right strategy, the right story, the right state can be found in the word of God. Do it God's way. One of the best resources that God has given us to contribute to our success in life is the church. A place where you can find encouragement, a place where you can connect quickly, a place where you can develop, experience transformation is right around you. Some of the things that you've been wrestling with in your mind that you're trying to figure out in your mind, the, in, the answer is next to you. You like we communicate more with you than you communicate with your neighbor. If I didn't tell you to speak to your neighbor, you wouldn't speak to your neighbor. And that would be the most conversation you probably have with your neighbor is when I tell you to speak to your neighbor, speak to your neighbor and say hi, neighbor. See, that might be the most you most conversation you have today. And you have no idea who's sitting on your row. You have no idea what is on the inside of them. You have no idea what they're going through. You have no idea. But we just rush in, rush out, rush in, rush out. Right? No, we have to connect. We got to manage this. We got to manage this. Because from this, remember I told you in the last keys, everything you are going to have, you have now, you will have, or you won't have is a result of your relationships. Think about it. Everything you have now came by way of a relationship. Everything. And everything that you're going to, because the Bible says, give and it shall be given to you. The Bible says, running over shall who? Men. So God's going to get it through people. So if you don't like people, if you find yourself limited in resources, check your relationships. If you find your resources drying up, to where if your job is going to be taken away from you and you don't have at least five or six people that you can call as a reference, you're doing really horrible on your relationships. Amen. They're there for that. Hey, hey, I'm in, I'm transitioning. You know anybody that's hired? Actually, yeah, we are. Yeah, send me your resume. But you'd be like, oh, I'm going through trans fasting, praying. Oh, God. Oh, God. Lord, please make a way. I bind every in the name of Jesus. Let every door be open now. No relationships. So you done binding, you done loosen. No relationships. Amen. Get relationships. Management is a very practical key. So three things. Why did he fail? One, he failed because his story, his state and his strategy were not conducive for success. He had the wrong he had the wrong three. He failed because his mind, his mood, and his mechanics were not aligned for success. Number three, he had the time, he had the talent, he had the treasure in his possessions, but because of fear, he did nothing. As we close with all heads bowed and eyes closed, manage your resources, manage your time, manage your talents, manage your relationships, manage your opportunities, Listen, you have everything you need to be successful. I promise you, you do. Like the success that you're looking for. And when I say success, it's about fulfillment. There's this thing that you wake up that make you feel like something's missing. And until I address that thing, I won't feel complete. Now, we plug it in with different things like, oh, I need a man. That's not it. Oh, and people get on drugs and different things. That's not it. I'm talking about the reason for which you were created. That's what drives you every morning. Which means you have all of the tools you need, but you have to manage it. Some of us, the answers are sitting on our bookshelf, but we never crack the book open. So I want to challenge you this week. Start using your resources better. Start working on the tools that you have. You have time. Sit down and map out your time for the week. It's 24 hours, how are you gonna spend it? How much of it is eight? Uh, 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 eating, sleeping, work, working on your business, how much? Carve that time out. Some of you guys have talents, but you're sitting in this church, you're sitting in life not using it. I'm here to put a charge on you. After we cross over this anniversary, we put a divine demand on every talent that you have on the inside of you in the name of Jesus. I don't care what your story is, you're going to use it for the glory of God. And everyone in here has resources. $5 a day Starbucks coffee can be an investment. We renovated a locker room. Resources could have did that. You can leverage your business to do good. Resources, you have it. 
but what are you doing with it? Father, we thank you and we come to you in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you that you've allowed us to spend time and really process this key. God, as you brought us this far this year, we thank you that it's going to be a good year because we're going to get in alignment with you. God, we ask that your spirit may give us wisdom, that you may give us grace to be good stewards and managers of our time, our talent, and our treasure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.